Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. This is a video about shear and moment diagrams, one of my very, very favorite topics. And in this problem, what we want to do is look at a reinforced concrete foundation and look at that as a beam element, okay? And what we want to do is draw the shear and moment diagram plots of this foundation. Now, what might this look like in the real world and kind of in 3D it might look something like this. So it's kind of a longer, narrow foundation like this. And maybe right here, there's a column that is coming down and subjecting that footing or foundation element to some type of an axial compressive load, right? So there's one force coming down, one force coming down here. Um, meanwhile, down at the base, you know, this is just sitting on soil. Blue makes you think water, but it's not water, it's soil. Um, and so we have kind of constant bearing down at the bottom of that foundation, el foundation element as it pushes on the soil itself. Okay, so we can look at that. Turn that one on, that one off. Okay, great. All right, so what we want to do here is look at this in 2D as drawn here and do those shear moment diagrams. Now we're going to make an assumption. We're going to assume that this foundation is relatively rigid. It's not going to deform too much and curve. So it's going to be relatively rigid compared to the stiffness of the soil itself. And so by making this assumption, we can model the effect of the soil on the bottom of the foundation as the simple uniformly distributed load. Now, is this exactly what's going on in the soil? No, it's not. It is an approximate model, but it's close enough for most design purposes. So in the real world, this would be the, um, the most common way that this foundation element would actually be designed. All right, so we've kind of got the free body given to us. We just need to figure out the intensity of that line load. So why don't we do this? Summation of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Pop some axes over there. That means that downward I have 90 kilonewtons plus 90 kilonewtons. That's equal to W times our, uh, times our uh, length of six meters, okay? So we're doing this little equation of equilibrium. We're gonna distribute that force along this entire length. And that means that W is equal to 180 divided by six equals 30 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, now that we've identified our live I'm sorry, line load, we're ready to do shear moment diagrams. So I'll just kind of recenter this. We'll do the shear diagram first. We're just doing a graphic integration of this free body. We're going to start over here at um, zero, zero, and we're going to follow the direction of, the, of these forces. So over this first one meter of width, we have 30 kilonewtons per meter of line load going upwards. One times 30 is 30, which I'll draw right there. And since my load function is a constant value, my shear function is a linear function as shown. Be sure to put units somewhere on your shear moment diagrams. That could be in the legend. That's the easiest way to do it. Or you could also label each and every value if you prefer to do it that way. As we continue to move left to right, we run across this 90 kilonewton force going down. So we decrease. That gets us down to negative 60. Hey, I am noticing one thing that I forgot to mention earlier. Do you see that we have a line of symmetry here. We have a line of symmetry here. And 
our loading diagram and our free body, those are symmetric. And a cool math trick is that when you integrate, when you integrate a symmetric function, the resulting equation is going to be called anti-symmetric. Anti-symmetric. And what that means is that the function that results is going to have two lines of anti-symmetry. So we're going to have kind of an x direction line and a y direction line. And the way that we can visualize this, I think actually maybe I'll construct it and then I'll explain the anti-symmetry once we have the full picture. Okay, so I'm going to go back to continue my business as usual, then we'll kind of come back to this little anti-symmetry aside that's going on. All right, so over between, uh, between these two applied forces, We've got four meters in length, four times 30 is 120. I'm down at 60. I want to increase right up there to positive 60. I'm down at negative 60. Once I add in 120 or 30 times 4, that puts me at positive 60. Next up, I have my concentrated force going down 60 minus 90. Now I'm down to negative 30. It is my custom just to label the negative values. I know some people like to put minus signs here. I typically don't do that. Over the last one meter, I increase by 30 and that gets me back to zero. Okay, now that we have this function uh, shown in its entirety, this is the correct internal shear force along the length of this beam. Do you see the anti-symmetry? This one's kind of tricky, but what I want you to do is first fold the function along y fold the function along y. I'm going to do another layer to show you how this works so I can delete it momentarily. So as I fold along y, here's what this stuff on the right looks like. That goes up to 60, that goes down to 30, that goes like this. Okay, so I just folded that part of the function over the yellow line, flipped it to the other side. Now if I fold with respect to x, I could fold this side up and see how it lines up with that triangle. I could fold that side up and it lines up with that triangle. So this is a property that is simply called anti-symmetry. Anti-symmetry. It is a function that when you fold it or reflect it about an x direction line and a y direction line, it makes the same pattern. Okay. Now we're ready to do our moment diagram. And since we have no applied moments and no reacting moments, we won't have any jumps or discontinuities. We can just go straight from our shear diagram and do that graphic integration. I'm gonna add the proper units to my plot. And the proper units to my plot are gonna be kilonewtons times meters. Let's figure out these areas. So my first little triangle, that one has, I'll call that area one. It has a base of one meter, a height of 30. It is a triangle, so that makes its area 15 kilonewtons times meters. There's my area one right there. This larger triangle, Call that area two. It has a base of two meters and a height of 60. Again, divide by two. So that area is equal to 60 kilonewtons times meters. Should probably get my kilonewtons in there just to make it clear. Okay, so there's my second area. And then, of course, we see the pattern from anti-symmetry. So there's another area, too. You can just put another arrow to that one. And lastly, this last little triangle is the same as area one. So we've got all of the areas that we need. OK, jumping back to the moment diagram. We start at 0, 0. We work from left to right. We will end at L, comma 0. 
All right, first area is positive above the zero line. And so that is increasing by 15. Next area is negative. I'm up at positive 15. Now let's subtract out 60. That gets me down to 45. I'll draw um, another construction line right here so we can keep track of it. There we go. All right, we're down at negative 45 and now we increase, oops, not by area one, but by area two, which is 60. That gets us back up to positive 15 here. And after we decrease by 15, that gets us back to zero. Okay, so I like this plotting points approach when I'm doing my moment diagram. I like it when I'm teaching this because um, if you are trying to do all four steps as you go through your moment diagram, it's easy to make a mistake or get them confused. But if you do areas and plotting points up and down, put the skeleton there and then go figure out your functions and the concavities. Is it concave up or is it concave down? Now, as I look, so first of all, my, my uh, moment diagram is linear, linear, and linear. That means my moment diagram is going to be quadratic the entire way. My moment diagram is going to be quadratic the entire way. Okay, I'll label this once we have our curve in. I'll switch markers to a lighter blue. Now here's the thing, here's the concept that is most frequently misunderstood. Since my shear diagram is increasing from left to right, that moment function is concave up. Increasing, concave up, increasing concave up. So here is my first concave up function like this. Now I get this nice big continuous beautiful symmetric parabola concave up and we finish the problem with a third concave up. And we can label each one of these curves as quadratic. I guess I labeled that one twice but that's okay. And if it's not clear what part is the curve and what part is, part is not, sometimes I'll do a little hatch like this that'll show the areas of positive bending moment versus negative bending moment. Did you notice what happened to our anti-symmetry? What happened to our anti-symmetry? Ooh, actually I've got a cool tool that I can use to show this. Let me pause my recording and get it set up. Okay, so what I did is I activated my symmetry tool and there is now a dashed line down this line of symmetry. So as I draw this moment function, do you see how the symmetry, it's not going to work perfectly because it is a freehand <laughs> sketch, so it's not perfectly lined up, but close enough, um, you can kind of see how our function has alternated from a symmetric loading function, an anti-symmetric shear function, and a symmetric moment diagram. In other words, once I integrate an anti-symmetric function, I get back to a symmetric function again. And that is true for all successive integrations. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed this video.